Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the International Wildcard Qualifier, day one of the finals. Four teams have made it here. Two will be qualifying to Worlds to play against the best in the US at the World Championship. I am, of course, Max Atlas Anderson. I am joined today by Barento Raz Muhammad and Jake Spawn Tiberi. What an incredible, auspicious occasion. Gentlemen, Raz, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing quite well. It's going to be incredibly exciting. This game decides who goes to Worlds. So that's yeah. going to be really fun to watch. Yeah, it certainly is. And I mean, when you just saw the crowd. I mean, getting into Brazil, it's always fun to see a live crowd there. They go absolutely nuts. I think INTZ, you know, one of the more controversial side that has ever come out of the CBL. <laughs> I mean, people either love them or hate them. I think right now, you know, the five and two group stage, the fact that they came out second, the fact that they absolutely smashed Dark Passage the last time these two teams played, uh, means that the home crowd team definitely have a little bit of a boost going into this game. Yeah, they most certainly do. Of course, the Wire Upper House looking phenomenal in Curubita at the moment. In Brazil, of course, the finals looking fantastic. But gentlemen, Lion Gaming are the team coming out in first seed here. Of course, they're going to be going up against uh, uh, A and Z, uh, A and X, X. sorry, coming mm. up very, very soon. Uh, that's, in fact, tomorrow. And both of these teams looking very, very good. However, tonight, 5-2 and two for both Dark Passage and INTZ. Both of them, same scoreline, but we're feeling... Looking very different at this stage. Yeah, it actually could have been much more different for, uh, I think, the Turkish lineup because, you know, they beat Oceania in about 60 minutes with an open nexus. They had to backdoor Albus Knox Luna's base with a 0 7 Ash, which yeah. was, you know, an interesting tactic. We'll see whether that pays off tonight <laughs> if they try and re go for it. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, uh, Dark Passage could have easily have been 3 and 4. Uh, they, they definitely did not look promising coming into the finals, but in saying that, they're playing with Korea, they're playing with Kozq, they even subbed in Immortaru, so this is a team that's used three substitutes throughout this tournament. Definitely have to feel for the guys, they've had a week off now to go away, scrim, try and get better, and I hope that they really have elevated their game, because they're going to need to against INTZ. Yeah, and exactly. It felt like going into the entire tournament, there were questions of whether or not they were coming in as a true team, because they did actually have two subs, and th those questions were really, uh, I guess, solidified. Because yeah. they didn't really come in as a team. They really did brute force come in to the, fi to the finals here. Just off based individual skill off of Elwind and Immortal and, uh, and perhaps Kirei as well. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you can see Kirei there on your screen. Uh, Elwind played a lot of split pushes uh, coming in Atlas. And I yes. think that there's a huge question mark around that because I actually don't think he's better than Yang. I think that Yang is a much better top laner than uh, Elwind. So I think isolating that matchup, I mean, even statistically right now, they don't even play towards Yang and he's still uh, putting up better numbers. So I think that, you know, uh, Elwind's in for a world of hurt. He has to play well if... Uh, th Dark Passage want to come out ahead. And do we think that's because he's got a sort of a little bit more linear style as well towards the top side of the map? L looking towards mostly playing those split pushes as opposed to the big tanks. Yang, of course, a fantastic NAR player, demonstrated that to us as well, can mix it up. Yeah, I think that uh, Yang actually can play split pushes as well. I mean, the NAR is a good example of that. He does really play both styles quite well. Yeah. Uh, you know, he can also play Gangplank. Like, th there are lots of things that Yang can do, and I think that Elwin, he's also a very flexible top laner from what I've seen as well domestically. It's just that this tournament, uh, yeah. his team has not succeeded with anything but him on a split pusher. The best thing about the Gangplank play is I don't think they really go back to that. I think on day one, they try to nix their lanes for an overall composition that worked well for them. That didn't work too well because they actually... Uh, had trouble in the early game in their laning phases. Mm -hmm. So they, they, exactly, Yang, this is probably the worst matchup for Dark Passage going up against INTZ, where they do rely on Elwin to really carry them through the, the game. And Yang is not only a nullifying force, if he plays the Shen, if he plays whatever, he's, fairly, he's really good on his top lane matchups. But at the same time, he plays towards the rest of the map incredibly well. Yeah, he certainly does. I mean, and we also saw that he was one of the only people that was successful in the Echo versus Na matchup. So he does have the counter pick for that coming out. I, I think that that's going to be really crucial in this game. And, and I think that overall, you know, uh, it just puts a lot more pressure on Kare. Uh, Kare has been vocal the whole tournament long. Uh, he's kind of the superstar now out of nowhere for this Dive Passage lineup because they really need him to solidify early game advantages. And he's definitely not happy with the communication that's coming out of his laners. They're not giving him him enough information he seems to be struggling a little bit and yeah that, yeah and i think honestly mm. my point this is why i do believe cause q is coming in because immortal showed really really solid games throughout the tournament um question is now if he's coming in perhaps their communication wasn't very strong coming in as a turkish lineup we may Koz need q you in. to uh to sort of clarify looking mm. solid because 
From what we've seen, Coscu hasn't necessarily had the tournament of his career so far. And Raz, you have an opinion on this. You've gone through the VODs. You've seen exactly how he plays it out. And you actually like Coscu. Uh, to a certain extent, I do like Coscu. What he shows uh, when he's behind, he does actually look to uh, play through the map. If he plays his Lissandra, uh, he will look to uh, roam out quite often. So that's a good point for him. Uh, you don't agree with me, though. Yeah, no, I think he's awful. <laughs> yeah, I just think he's straight up not a good mid laner at all. So, uh, uh, yeah, you know, every now and again, he pops up and surprises you.
That was absolutely spectacular. I mean, we've heard all of that music before, but I personally have never heard it like that. That was unbelievable. Yeah, I don't. Uh, that that was really impressive, actually. The coordination that you needed to do to do yeah. stuff like that that was actually pretty cool. So yeah, no, I'm happy with that. One of the better player intros I think I've ever seen. Yeah. Exactly. That just was pretty have good. Have them pop out of the crowd. It's genius. Yeah, exactly. I, the the best part for me was just the random guitar solo going through. That <laughs> you, were, that that you were definitely a big fan of that one, Raz. But we do have a final to get into here. Of course, the first one: Dark Passage versus INTZ. This is going to be huge. Of course, following tomorrow is going to be Lion Gaming versus Albus Knox Luna. But let's start with our first matchup because we've, we've already been through this just a little bit, but it will be very difficult for Dark Passage. However, this is the team that was able to take down Dark, uh, Supermassive in the final. I mean, they can throw some spanners in the works, and I personally am ready to start believing. It's three-fifths of the team that took down. Uh, super massive in the finals. So yeah, Atlas, that's I think still the majority. Uh, it is certainly the majority. That's sixty percent for those playing at home. <laughs> actually, uh, so yeah, you know, I, I completely agree. I think that the week off would have really done them a lot of good. Uh, they yeah. would have had, you know, arguably stronger scrim partners as well. Because across the other side of the bracket, you know, you do have the CIS team. You do have. Uh, of course, Lion Gaming, who pretty much went through, I think, with one defeat in the whole tournament so yeah. far. So uh, you would hope that Dark Passage really has been doing their homework. And uh, INTZ, they're a team that you can try and figure out. Uh, the Chiefs have had their number internationally. They say that they kind of have them figured out on stage. So we'll see if another team can replicate that. The worst thing about this for me is that even though, as you said, there's like three fifths, uh, three members of the lineup who took mm -hmm. down Super Massive, but also. It, it gets even worse there because Rogu really came in only for the playoff for yep. this team. So it's really just two players that have gone through oh, the regular season. Oh, we've lost the majority. We're down to 40%. Uh, no, I, I completely agree. I, and, you know, uh, that, that's a lot of your identity. When you lose your core, like your mid lane and your jungle as well, I think that really does impact. And I think that's why we've seen them play a little bit different because we know that Kurei likes to be active. That, that's what he's kind of made his bread and butter about. I mean, very active early game jungler. And I think that that is why the communication is key. If they have ironed out communication and Kurei can go off, you know, really take it to a revolter. As we've seen a couple of junglers try and do this tournament already, they have a fighting chance. Yeah, and yeah. you actually, uh, Raz, we had a com conversation about this before. The fact that Kure, if he's able to get that Elise pick, things do look very good. So we're, we're sort of looking at this Dark, dark pa Passage lineup thinking that, you know, Fiora Elise probably going to be target bans. But if they can draw out other bans mm -hmm. during this best of five series, could that be an opportunity for them to attack? Yeah, exactly. But I do think that the Elise ban is going to be interesting simply because he's actually played more, a lot more junglers and he probably prefers Nidalee over the Elise pick. Uh, but it does fit the style fairly good. Fantastic. But we are going to get a bit of a recap on INTZ and their journey to get here. Representing Brazil at Wildcard this year will again be INTZ. Past performances in international competition have been disappointing for INTZ, however. With a spot at Worlds on offer, they intend to give it their all and make their mark like never before. INTZ enjoyed a strong year in 2015 in Brazil's CB Law. In Split 1, they took everyone by surprise, taking out the title. They made their mark beating KYD 3-0. Brazilian champions INTZ represented the region at that year's wildcard in Turkey. They didn't perform to their expectations and were beaten by Besiktas. In Split 2 2015, they lost their star player, Jungler, Revolta. Even so, they continued to perform strongly and made it to the finals. Up against Pain Gaming, INTZ could not find their form and lost their crown to Pain Gaming, who then went on to represent Brazil at Worlds. In 2016, INTZ decided to reform the same team that was successful previously. Revolta had returned and the team's performances improved immediately. INTZ won the first split of CB LOL in 2016 and qualified again for Wildcard. Pode comemorar a torcida da INTZ, vão ser campeões novamente da primeira etapa do CB LOL 2016. INTZ's performance at Wildcard in Mexico was disappointing for the team and their many fans. They were eliminated in the semi-final against the Russian champions Hard Random. 
Defeat again in another wildcard event saw INTZ return to Brazil determined to take out the second split of CB LOL to give themselves another chance. In a historical finale against the CNB, INTZ again were crowned champions. This now will be the third wildcard that INTZ has participated in. Brazil's hopes of representation at Worlds rest with INTZ. Can they handle the pressure and the expectations? Well, at least INTZ have managed to take down CIS this time around. It was a pretty dominant performance against ANX this time. Of course, formerly known as Hard Random. A lot of those players still on that team. But we do have another team here as well. Dark Passage uh, going to be taking them on on the Rift. And this is a team that, as we were talking about before, a little bit gutted. Yeah, uh, you know, we, we, we keep going back to it, but the substitutes really is a big story for Dark Passage. I think the way that they've played through it so far is really impressive. I think the fact that they've won a couple of clutch league games actually speaks to the fact that they are starting to come together, right? Day 1 and 2 looked very sloppy, but from there they did build reasonably well. So I think that, you know, uh, Dark Passage that, that backs up against the wall, but the Turkish lineups always do well in these situations. Yeah, exactly. And the best thing about it is that they've actually focused on that specific style of just going to the, towards that split push. If they actually did not know what they were looking to do, if they're trying to do uh, a bit of everything as, yep. as we've seen throughout this tournament uh, with certain specific teams like the Chiefs, like uh, Saigon Jokers. Even then the Japanese region. I mean, uh, the LJL, they, they were kind of jacks of all trades in the end. Were they playing early game aggression towards Tussle? Like, you know, are they playing around a very good AD carry? Are we playing top side of the map? So I think that, you know, the fact that Dark Passage do have that defined style should be a strength. Yeah, exactly. Well, we'll see whether it does work out, but we are going to recap Dark Passage as well and let's have a look at the video. <laughs> Regaining the crown as the premier team of the Turkish Champions League was not an easy assignment for Dark Passage. In order to achieve this milestone, they had to beat the title holders from Split 1, Supermassive. In the group stage, Dark Passage and Supermassive faced each other twice, with Supermassive winning both encounters. At the end of seven weeks of the qualifying rounds, both teams showed themselves a class above the others and assured their spot in the semi-finals. Dark Passage's first challenge was HWA Gaming. They overcame this hurdle and found themselves ready for redemption. In the other semi-final, there were no surprises. Supermassive easily saw off their challenges with a thumping 3-0 victory. In the group stage, Supermassive won both contests. However, when it mattered most, Dark Passage responded in the best possible manner. Dark Passage exacted sweet revenge and took down Supermassive to claim the title. With the TCL trophy in their hands and qualification for wildcard secured, Dark Passage will try to relive past glories and win a return to Worlds after a two-year absence. And it is going to be very difficult to do so, however, I believe their superstar top laner, Elwind, will have a chance. I, I think that, like, if there's a, an option for this team to take down at least a game here against the heavy favorites in INTZ, Elwin's got to be the one to do it, right? Yeah, he's solo carried the team in a few games. And the best thing about it is that he's had an absurd amount of kill share and just damage throughout the game. There was a game where he actually had 15 of 30 kills for his team. So <laughs> if it's going to happen, it's going to happen through Elwin. Yeah, 100%. I, I think that they've got like kind of two options. You know, They either isolate the matchup or if Elwin and Karay have actually been working together and they can kind of bait INTZ to playing their bottom side of the map style. I mean, they, INTZ are a team that love to isolate. Gang. So, you know, if you can get Karay up there early, maybe get him a Rek'Sai, get him his Nidalee. They have very unique gank parts. Uh, Karay has shown that like he is that proactive jungler. He will try and take it to the top lane and, you know, get that advantage rolling. So, I think they're the two people that need to stand up. At the same time, Rogu, Zeitnot, like, big targets painted on them because, yeah. you know, Macau, Tokas, they love to be able to exploit weaker bottom lanes. And from what, everything I've seen, you know, this is an area that hasn't changed for Dark Passage. Yeah. And it is still a weakness in my opinion because, uh, you know, the bottom lane of INTZ is really strong uh, in this tournament so far. Exactly, but Dark Passage will look to actually pick for it. They go for the Lucian Braum at any point, try mm -hmm. and play back if they are pressuring, pressuring towards top side. So they will be aware that their uh, bot lane is fairly weak and they'll play towards it. 
Well, we'll see whether it is going to work out because I actually have a feeling that the reason Cosq's come back in is a lot to do with what you were saying before, Raz. The fact that he is a little bit more proactive. They may have identified the fact that Elwind is their ticket to victory, and they just need to try and prop him up as best as possible, and Cosq might be the man to do that by moving around the map, trying to get up there and trying to create opportunities for Elwind to really put the rest of the team on his back. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to see how it works. It really does come down to communication at the end of the day. If, he, if that team has not actually shirt up their comms, if they're not really playing as well together, especially up against a really strong INTZ, yeah. then really this change would probably have been for not. Yeah, and I, 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 Yang kind of has the old go-going feel about him as well, oh. which is you just don't dive the man. I mean, he's turned a couple of them around this tournament already. He's very, very hard to kill. Uh, so, I, I, as I said, I, I think it's more about, you know, getting the CS lead, getting the pressure lead, force him off some farm, you know, disappear into that fog of war. Uh, Talia has been a really good pick for doing things like this uh, all tournament. And, you know, if you can build that own advantage, then you win through pressure. I don't think you win through, you know, camping out top lane. Uh, but in saying that, you know, uh, INTC, they haven't looked the best either. I mean, yeah. day one against Lion, they looked absolutely abysmal, to be honest. I mean, they were just they got completely demolished. And against the Chiefs, they also had weaknesses. I mean, they're their two losses. Uh, Dark Passage only lost to people above them on the ladder. So, you know, they lost to INTZ. They also lost to... Uh, did they lose to Pete? Yeah, they lost to Lion. So, you know, yeah. uh, A and X finished below them. Thank goodness. Heads to heads. They're fantastic, <laughs> aren't they? Uh, so, uh, I think that Dark Passage, you know... As I said, it could have easily been, you know, the four, three and four, but they did pull it together in the end. That's yeah. the thing about INTZ that you mentioned. Of not only did they do poorly up against Lion, but in the game uh, one up against KLG, their early game they actually were taken off by by, uh, by quite surprise. They were kind of unaware of how much pressure they were going to be coming into the early game. They did have that boot camp in Europe. Uh, coming into this, but with that being said, they didn't have much LAN experience, so they really had to scale up throughout the tournament with experience. Yeah, and you know, the pressure is there. I, and I keep going back to this for INTZ because I think it is relevant. When they've been asked the question in the past, the pressure has set in and they really have, I'm not going to call them chokers, but you know, they've stumbled on the last step. Yeah. And you know, there's not much more pressure than this. <laughs> so they sit in, uh, in front of a home crowd, I mean, absolutely packed out. People, you know, expected you to lose. There was so much disappointment. Where one one, this is horrible. Like it'd been like so many days, like three and a half years since we last lost to a Latin American team. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like they just absolutely destroy the second part of the group stage as everyone starts believing again. The last thing you want to do is let these guys down on your screen. So I think that IATZ do come in with you know heavy weights. There's nothing for Dark Passage to lose. They're playing with two subs and a newish support. I mean, yep. they're just going to come in here and throw the kitchen sink. I mean, really ball in INTZ's court. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the best thing about this is, as you said, they really came into the second part of the, the league doing really well. And honestly, it really showed in Macau's interview when they were talking about, like, what happened? How did you start performing so well? And it just they talked about how they went back to the hotel as a team, talked about really all of their issues, uh, really talked about why aren't they playing as aggressively that INTZ yep. play style. And so if that, must, <laughs> that talk must have done quite amount of good for them because going through the rest of this uh, tournament, they've been smashing. Yeah, 100%. And you know, it, I, I like that interview because the theme was like two things. Early aggression is gone. We don't know why. And we aren't booting people out of Revolta's jungler. They have eyes on like our superstar, like from go to woe. And yeah. people really were doing that. I mean, yeah. Revolta was warding himself before second buff. And twice the jungler was already in his jungle. Like the ward yeah. was like too deep because like, he walks back in and they're just waiting for him there. So <laughs> I really do think that a lot of this matchup is going to come down to INTZ as a team kicking Correa out because he's going to go try and find him because if Volta can't snowball lanes, I mean, they have struggled, especially around that mid lane area. I mean, there's been a couple of games where uh, Mr. Tokers has just been absolutely uh, crushed in the first seven minutes and, you know, been playing from 70 CS deficits for a lot of the uh, games. Yeah, exactly. So the early game is going to be the biggest point for me because, uh, sure, they do share jungle picks with Gragas. Uh, but if you're picking Gragas, then, of course, uh, Kyrae is going to be looking towards the Rek'Sai pick, the Nidalee pick, the Elise pick. He is going to be incredibly aggressive based off of if the, the waves do look to crash in. So you have to start warding for that. And something we've seen quite a bit on blue side is they will put in an early ward in the blue uh, in the blue buff once they get do get the lane shoved in. So um, how are they going to actually act towards that aggression? Are they going to actually collapse? INTZ yep. that is. Um, they've shown later on in the uh, later on in the actual tournament that they are willing to do that. That they do actually play towards Revolta, but at the beginning it was kind of rough, to say the least. Yeah, and is it going to be about Dark Passage trying to pick these aggressive junglers, trying to 
I, I guess, get in there before INTZ can even react? Or is, is this about INTZ ironing that out and making sure that never happens? Yeah, I don't think there is a way that you can really get in there before they can react right once. You, you can get maybe an early cheese in, but after that, I mean, Vision is going to be key for INTZ of, you know, really solidifying that and then just collapsing quickly. I think that, like, jungle invasion never, very rarely actually comes down to a jungle. Uh, I mean, if any jungle face checks any jungle at level 6, you generally die. Yeah. Uh, like, there is no such thing. Like, you meet in the river and things like that, Nidalee is going to be a better skirmisher because of the range auto attacks. But uh, I think that it's about the shoving lanes. Like, it always has been. If you can shove in, then you can collapse with your support, you can collapse with your mid laner, something like Talia, and there's absolutely no response that can come out of the other team because, you know, you just lose too much gold underneath turret. So I think that it is more about the lane priority that Dark Passage get. If they want to take it to Revolta, then actually just you know picking one strong champ and running into the jungle. Yeah, exactly. So I do think that INTZ have they're throughout the tournament, even though that even though Line has actually been performing incredibly well, yeah. uh, they've been playing with uh, focus on their lanes rather than the vision control themselves. And I think INTZ has been coming out as the best team in terms of keeping up their pinks, actually utilizing them and taking advantage of it and getting picks for themselves quite frequently. They actually hit the Baron when they, <laughs> they when they go towards it. I mean, we have lots of team in the IWC race. That just uh, for some reason walk into the pit and just sit there for a while. I ah, mean, IATZ, yeah. they take it with priority. They pick comps that can take down Baron quite quickly, actually. I think that their dragon play has been also quite good. Like, there are lots of things about the INTZ roster. If you can't tell, that, that was my favorite coming in. There are lots of <laughs> things about the INTZ <laughs> roster that I actually like uh, to see. So I, I agree. I think they play with priority very well. Yeah. Yeah, and Raz, you were actually talking to me before about the fact that INTZ play a very sort of objective-based playstyle. I mean, if we look at the other very strong team in this tournament so far, Lion Gaming, they play a lot around their lanes, a lot around power in there, but INTZ, one of these teams, sort of looking like a little mini Europe just, yeah. just trying to get that map play down. Yeah, pretty much they go through the meta. They play the meta fairly well. The problem is, of course, now, if you compare them to actual top tier, top tier regions, of course, they do fall flat. But they're going up in IWC. Hey, you don't know that, man. We thought the same about Pan Gaming. I had, I had a, a suspicion, and they took two games at Worlds last year. I mean, they were another team that we said they play the meta. They have a couple of pocket picks like the Draven running around. But at the end of the day, you know, they're a very standard team. Then they came in, and they didn't make huge waves. But, you know, there were some ripples that came out of it. So I think INTZ are kind of a similar team. Like, are they definitely going to like be able to take it to number one seeds at this point? No. Like I, I think that's fair to say. I think the yeah. wildcard region is still a little bit away from that. But you know, you get put this team against the second and third seed. Like I, I think that they are a good outfit. Uh, yeah. and I think that they do have that international experience to prove it. Yeah, and exactly. I, and I think the something to really look towards is the fact that um for Brazil, they really haven't been outputting the team, or at least that the team that they've expected to be the top in their yep. region going into Worlds. They've had Kaboom, which has really been considered as fourth place, but they had that massive surge in their region. Mm -hmm. And then Payne, which at the time was considered to be the second place team in their region. Uh, but of course, they overperformed. And as we talked about, as you said earlier, uh, that INTZ generally were known as a bit of chokers, I would say. Yep. So uh, that definitely was the case for me uh, that I believe that was the case for them earlier. Uh, now it seems like they've perhaps conquered it. Yeah, well, hopefully they have. And of course, to put some context around this, we're, we're talking about international showings from a wildcard team. Supermassive didn't even make it to this tournament. And if you remember back to MSI, they did fantastically well. This is a team that was taking games left, right and center, actually looking like they could step up to a lot of these, uh, these teams. And when you're talking about first, second seeds, I mean, there's only one seed going into that tournament. So definitely a good news story. And we'll see whether... You know, we're going to have a better showing this time around at Worlds. Yeah, I, I agree. And, uh, you know, I think that when you have a look at Dark Passage, you have to also look at the path that they took in uh, to get in here. You know, we keep mentioning that they went through Supermassive. Supermassive are a great team. Everyone's seen them a lot. So I think that, you know, both these teams, uh, especially if you give Dark Passage, you know, a couple of, like, a couple extra weeks, you know, really get those scrim blocks down. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how much they've improved just this week through, you know, some actual solid play with a roster uh, and really see if they can step up. One of the big things that we had about uh, INTZ coming into this whole tournament is that they hadn't played on any of the most recent patches. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I think that that is an area where they can continue to be stretched. Yeah, and actually, as we bring up the INTZ lineup, Tokas was a, a player that I had a lot of questions for personally, just because we'd only seen him really playing things like the Azir when he was back in Vogue, around about 6.12. Didn't necessarily know what he was going to be bringing out, but looks to have just slided into the meta just fine. Yeah, slid in very well. You saw a 13.3 KDA up in the top lane. Raz, I don't know if you know, but that is one of the best in the tournaments from my man Yang. <laughs> uh, going up there, he is an absolute freak show. Yeah, exactly. He's been playing incredibly well. I think the, the biggest pick for him, and this is going to be really a, a, a large point throughout the entire series, is Nar and Shen. Yep. That, of course, not only is Nar just 
disgusting currently, where he apparently doesn't have any bad matchups if he goes for that Frozen Mallet pick. But then, of course, that's just going to be nullifying the top lane matchup in general. If he does pick up the Shen, it doesn't really matter who he's going up against. So they're going to be banning out that Fiora almost certainly. And they're the only team that was brave enough to leave the Nar up. They lost the game, but they didn't lose it because of the Nar. I mean, the Chiefs played bottom side priority much better than INTZ in that game, but they have left the Nar up, allowed it to be first picked away, and taken counter picks into it. So I do think that they understand the fact that, you know, Nar, while strong, does have areas and windows where you can try and exploit. Ways to deal with yeah, it. Yeah, ways to deal with it. I mean, uh, I, I really do think that INTZ are an intelligent team when it comes to the pick ban phase. Uh, I also think that Dark Passage have quite a good pick ban phase, however. Uh, they, play, they pick around their weaknesses incredibly well. Yeah, exactly. So, of course, as I said earlier, the Lucian pick, the yep. bomb pick, that if they are playing towards topside, if they're trying to get Elwind ahead, and that almost certainly does end up happening in their games, uh, then, of course, they, their bottom lane will play fairly safe. And on top of that, on top of them being uh, playing safe, they will look to... Uh, uh, Pick safely too. Pick the a other, lot of disengage. Yeah, the other big one for me was actually the Lissandra. You know, we haven't seen a lot of Lissandra this tournament. And uh, when we have seen it, it's been pretty much out of Dark Passage. And I think that it's one of these picks that, you know, if you aren't that cohesive as a team, it gives you a big go button. It gives you a big reactionary disengage. You can't really run through a Lissandra. She just does way too much damage late game. Uh, so, as I said, like, th this is a team that has very big, obvious weaknesses. Maybe, like, you know, not as like much more glaring than the subtle weaknesses of INTZ, but they do cover them up very well with good team fighting comms, good mid range, you know, 500 range comms. They can get down and dirty. And then some great late game shot calling. I think that is one thing. Whilst their regular game shot calling has looked all over the uh, place, yeah. their late game calls have actually looked very good out of Dark Pass. Well, that's how they've managed to sneak these uh, victories that they were managing to. Of course, you were bringing up the fact that it's It's honestly, it was on a knife's edge whether or not they were three and four or five and two. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's it all comes down to late game shot calling. It's like, yes, Elwin, just go and take down the Nexus, guys, mm -hmm. because we can keep them busy up towards the top side hey, of the map. That was and that was a brave play. You, you take that back. <laughs> that, that, that was all Zion. Uh, <laughs> he sacrificial was the man. able to beat him in, man. Just keep oh, coming man. in. They, the all pressure. the ports were stopped. So, uh, no, I agree. And, you know, uh, at a certain point, Clutch has to be rewarded, right? Yeah. I, I mean, we talk about Clutch players a lot. It, when back's against the wall, you want one of these Dark Passage guys making the calls because, you know, they've shown pretty much in 100% of situations this tournament that they're going to come out ahead. Yeah, exactly. And I think that Lissandra is going to be a, a bigger priority in terms of just uh, either you ban it out or you really do have to play around it. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about Elise a little bit, but honestly, like if he, if Korea has been looking away from the Elise, you have to look towards banning that at Lissandra because Lissandra players are honestly the scariest players in the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta be, if you're proficient on the champion, if you can get the proper flanks off, then you have to a, you have to have proper wards, and then if you don't have proper wards as a team, if you can't really set them up properly, then you are going to get demolished, and we've seen that quite a few times already. And yeah. you have to be prepared for double TP every single time, so you yeah. know you can't push bot play pushing bottom lanes, because if the jungler ever gets behind you, you know, wards up the Krugs, wards up the Gromp, she just goes over the wall. She has similar gank paths to Rek'Sai, but like 100 to zeros, your mid lane or AD carry. Uh, and you know, she has an incredibly gold-efficient build now. I mean, uh, going for Proto Belt into something like the Abyssal Scepter, into Zonya's Hourglass, pretty much gives you cooldown reduction cap without having to go out of the way and build an item that you don't want to build, you know, something. Uh, then you can go into, like, Void stuff. You can go, like, th she's just so flexible in her build paths uh, that it really, she, she's one of the best picks for me on this patch. I thought that Aurelian Soul had a really good lane matchup against her, which is why we weren't going to see her a lot. Unfortunately, the dragon disappeared off Summoner's Rift. Yep, just floated away. Yeah, just yeah, uh, you know, bugs greater than dragons at the end of the day. <laughs> uh, so, you know, uh, she, she should see a lot of uh, resurgence here. Yeah, yeah we exactly. actually haven't seen Tokka's player just yet, but Tokka's mm -hmm. has played six unique champions over seven games, so I highly doubt that he cannot play the champion, and I'm excited to see whether he's going to go for the pickaway here, because I think you're exactly right. It's going to be high priority. Yeah, so my biggest point is I think this is actually going to work out well for them strategically, or at least Dark Passage, that yep. is, because while they do rely on that 1-4 quite a bit, if, he, if they do get Fiora or Trundle, perhaps, uh, I do think that if they give, up, give themselves a Lissandra, then they can actually play it fairly easily with a 1-3-1, one, one, and if they get that going for them, then that'll make it'll simplify the game a little bit more. For yeah, them. we've talked about one three ones a lot, but you know, uh, for a team that you know is struggling to really get 
any advantage. All you have to do in a one three one is get yourself to you know that 15, 20 minute mark where you've got one and a half two items and get your claw set into a one three one because it's really hard to rip double teleport out of one three one, especially if you're playing something like a Malzahar that doesn't run teleport generally. So uh, yeah, I think that you know that is something that INTZ have to watch out for. One three ones have been incredibly potent uh, the whole tournament just because you know opening up the map because of how they rotate around at about the five minute mark is much easier right now. You know, you can just blindly swap top, blindly swap towards the mid lane. It's generally been good news for these teams because the deep wards haven't been there throughout the jungle. And uh, yeah, it's really hard to get the teams out. There might be an, an, a decent way to sort of try and hide that bottom lane as well, moving them towards the mid lane. You, know, you can have your jungler there helping them out as well. So if Zytnot is going to be struggling there towards the bottom side, it might be uh, triaged a little bit by uh, opting in for that halfway through. Yeah, exactly. And it'll be, uh, they can actually act, uh, contest wards freely if they can send their bottom lane mid. I know that going up against INTZ, once you f do find yourself behind uh, in, in position, then of course, uh, you do definitely want to be able to contest it, uh, get a pick off, anything really, get it exactly going. right. But we are into champion select, ladies and gentlemen, for final number one, INTZ versus DP. As the first ban is going to be that Fiora, I feel like we uh, went over this one. Good to see that it is actually happening as Na is going to be the follow-up ban. Yang not going to get his champion. Elwin not going to get his either. Yeah, already this is not really this is not surprising whatsoever. They don't want to see the the Na on Yang and of course Elise and Fiora feels like must bans in this situation. Not only because Kure is an Elise player, but of course uh, the two v two with Elise is always in her favor. So. Um, yeah, smart pick so far. Yeah, it certainly is. And, you know, we talked about it. It's not because they're afraid of the champions, because they don't want to give them the easy play style. You don't want to give a team that has a linear play style, you know, the best picks to execute upon that. You know, make them play the trundle, be able to pick the Shen into it. Something along those lines that, you know, INTZ, they can get an advantageous trade because it didn't look like there was much of an answer to either the Fiora or the Elise so far. Well. The third ban is going to be the Cassiopeia out of INTZ. It's going to finish things up for the ban list for Brazil's side as Gangplank was the second ban for Dark Passage. So making sure that they get rid of those two very, very powerful champions on this patch and especially in this tournament as well. Gangplank and Nah have really stood out. There's Shen, the Ooh, final one. So we got okay. a serious top lane look. That's a huge spanner in the works because all of a sudden there really isn't a good matchup here if they take something like an Echo. I actually think that, you know, given the fact that they have hit top lane so much, uh, you know, Echo versus Trundle, we've seen it go both ways, but because of the Trinity Force rush now, Echo actually starts winning that one out more earlier than not. So I, I think that this is a very interesting matchup now. My point on this is I think that Dark Passage are going to be fine into almost any matchup going here. I think that they've seen, uh, they've, uh, they're willing to test out an Aurelia pick if they do go into uh, oh, that's Echo. A good point. Yeah. So if we see an Aurelia, if we see Aurelia versus Echo, they're going to be fine with that. They're going to play toward top, towards top side. I feel like Aurelia was standing out, but Vladimir is going to be the first pick here for INTZ. They didn't think about it too much. Tokas just says, gimme the Blood Lord, and he's going to pick that one up straight away. So Dark Passage now with their opportunity. And this to is make where the pick. pressure comes onto the rest of the INTZ members. I mean, Revolta has to grab something like a Gragas, something like a Rek'Sai, and prove that his champion pool needs to be hit. Ash or Jin needs to be picked up by Macau, and he needs to have a massive game because you can't let one member of your team in Yang cop three target bans on red side of Summoner's Rift. That literally means that they think that there is no other priority for INTZ to pick around. So, you know, Tokas needs to go off. Macau needs to go off. They need to start freeing up Yang's champion pool because even if they win this game one, I mean, there's obviously a clear uh, game plan coming out of Dark Passage right now. And the yeah. best thing about this is that throughout seven games, Talkers has shown uh, uh, six unique champions. He does have an incredibly wide pool from the looks of it. So really, even sending a ban out towards him doesn't seem very likely. Perhaps the Malzahar, he's shown it twice. So, uh, But he's got the Vladimir this time. Yeah, he's already picked that one up as Bard is being considered. The Jockster there towards the bottom side of the map. Revolta just making sure the crowd is as loud as possible by hovering things like the Lee Sin and the Nidalee as well. But seven seconds to go. We'll see whether he decides to play the Blind Monk. He's still got it there. No, Echo is going to be picked up. And there is the support Karma as well. My favorite thing about this from Dark Passage is, is they're flexing out the Trundle. They've had uh, played Trundle both support and topside. So they are just trying to give the best matchup possible for Elwind while not really showing too much. Uh, so the Echo pick coming through is going to be interesting to see because Trundle has a good pick into Echo, but at the same time Irelia does, so their last pick they should be holding on to uh, their top lane here. 
Yeah. Well, of course, picking the Karma up as well. I mean, it's a notable pick into the Vladimir, so denying that one from Cos Q as far as trying to stop the Blood Lord from going nuts. But Talia is still there, even if he hasn't played it so far this tournament. But with Cassiopeia Band, there's not a whole lot of other options. 14 seconds to go. Uh, that's still a pretty wide champion pull up. I mean, Malzahar's available, Talia's oh, Malzahar, available. Yeah. Uh, you know, th I, I Lissandra's still going. Yeah, too. Lissandra's up. I, I mean, there's lots that uh, Dark Passage can play there at the mid lane. Oh, well, no, no, no. Yeah, lo lots that they can play, but I mean, I'm talking about notable Vladimir counters. And I guess Malzahar's certainly one of them. So, regardless, still wrong. As that is going to be Lucian picked up as well for Zynon. This is going to be interesting because I do love the Malzahar pick. Of course, first four or five levels, uh, Vladimir will be able to shove out, but. Uh, once he does get the shove in, once he can get the levels in, the first back as well, uh, Malzahar, a trundle, if it's a trundle top two, feels like Dark Passage, passage does have, have uh, quite a bit of priority. Uh, and it's purple side Rek'Sai here, so top lane is going to have to really ward out a little far deeper too because uh, a tunnel through the, their own jungle is a possibility. Yeah, it certainly is, and you know, that's where it comes in because, you know, Echo, I was a little bit surprised to see it, uh, even though it's like the last really big carry threat available in the top lane. Uh, historically, it does really weird against Rek'Sai because as soon as you go into that auto attack, you get the immediate Umbaro, uh, really does wreck his day. So we'll see uh, if Yang is equal to the task he has been in the past. Uh, I, I think that there is priority for Echo in this lane. I mean, I know that Trundle used to be seen as a huge counter pick to the Echo, but that was when he was building Iceborne Gaul and it's pretty much pure tank. Uh, we have seen a little bit more of, you know, the aggression coming out of the Echo, you know, with first item Sheen. So I think that, you know, there is kill threat earlier in the game, but yeah. Trundle scales better than pretty much anyone. Uh, and, you know, this is a double tank line comp. They're going to have the Echo, they're going to have Revolta on Gragas pretty much building pure tank. So there's going to be good options late game, even if he wants to go towards team fight. Yeah, exactly. With, of course, uh, Tok is being pretty tanky there on the Vladimir in the mid lane as well. We've seen those Vlads get up to pretty high health bar totals, plus that uh, Spirit Visage Rush making it pretty difficult to kill. But it looks like it is going to be that top lane trundle like you guys have been alluding to. As now Rogu was thinking about the Tom Kench for quite a while. The Lucian Braum, very powerful lane in the laning phase, and I actually really like this focus from DP, making sure that they have a strong 2v2. It's it's kind of weird. Uh, INTZ does, uh, they do have a, the shove early, and they can pretty much dictate this lane. Uh, Dark Passage, it might be as strong in terms of skirmishing, um, but they really should not find themselves in that position. I do like uh, the bottom lane coming out of INTZ. I actually can't believe they didn't pick uh, the Tom Kench here. Yeah. I, I, I think that that is a legit a losing, uh, losing matchup now. Like uh, Karma Ash has got the biggest shove. Yeah. and then have actual serious kill threat as soon as Gragas comes anywhere into their lane. They picked the Braum because of the Gragas. So, like, you know, that's a very obvious one. They don't want the Flash Body Slam initiation coming out here. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, you have to be able to live through the laning phase. And uh, I don't know how they do that right now, uh, looking at, you know, the fact that they're up against Ash Karma, which is one of the most obnoxious long-range poking lanes exactly. uh, in the game. The only real way they come to come in into this is uh, it is based off of that. If they mess up, uh, then of course the all in from Lucian and Brom is fairly mm -hmm. strong. But they should not find themselves in that position whatsoever. Uh, level six, perhaps if there is uh, Rek'Sai and Malzahar coming into that lane, that could work well. But it feels like they're relying on that. So they get shoved in and they get poked out. Yeah, will it need both of them though? I mean, can it just be a, a cam from the jungler towards the bottom side of the map to help DP out? Yeah, um, look, potentially anything's possible. We've seen that. Like, I, I was talking about it yeah. the other day. You know, like you can't gank this lane. Grave walks in, just picks up a double kill. I, I'm <laughs> bad at predicting things like this. But if played well from IATZ, no, the jungler assistant should not be enough. I mean, Ash Karma is just way too safe in that regard. Yeah, yeah. especially since Kire and Elwood right now, they've picked themselves a pretty good 2v2 topside. I, I would be surprised if they decide then to go towards helping Zeknot and Rogu. <laughs> Yeah. If you're throwing three bands top to like guarantee an echo pick and you don't camp the heck out of it because of the early shove versus trundle, I really do question your strategy coming into the game. Exactly. <laughs> well, we are on to Summoner's Rift for game number one of this best of five series. The winner of this will be heading to Worlds. It's all on the line. And our home team, INTZ, looking to be the favorites up against DP for the moment, but we'll see whether they can surprise us in game number one. So far, already in the draft, some surprises. Froud is loud, honestly. Going nuts <laughs> right now. 
It Would is you not be? Come on. Home crowd team, Tokers. Gets a little bit poked out, but gotta love stuff like this, Raz. Already a bit of a fight going on here. Is that not loses half of his health bar? Ah, yes, yeah, a preview home. to the Joy Lane right there. Ah, there you go. <laughs> the best thing about this is INTZ actually won a game simply based off that level one. They stopped the level one early. I think it was against uh, um, the Saigon Jokers squad. Um, either way, they stopped them from backing and then took it over completely and had a ward down. So Another Storm Raiders. Yeah. Atlas. Mm. It's been coming out left, right. And I've been so proud. And a Grasp Echo. Yang normally plays... Uh, Further battle up there, so that's a really interesting pickup as well uh, for Yang in the top lane. Is there a reason why you do that into Trundle specifically or something? He has more sustain than you, I think. I, I just think that means he doesn't feel like he can win Whoa. the all in. That is a vote in favor of INTZ. Best thing about the top lane matchup, too, is that uh, uh, Alvin, if he does go towards the Trundle, does get the Vamp Scepter early. Regardless, mm -hmm. he will have quite a bit of sustain. It's going to be interesting to see how they try to stop that. Looks like Yang, of course, he took the Grasp of the Undying. He's probably just going to mitigate it, try and take small trades, and not really do too much in this matchup, unless if Revolt is there. And look at this. I mean, Jokesta, level one, solo stopped the Grump by putting a ward down and then disappearing into Fog of War. And they are completely zoned. I mean, they're not getting experience right now. I mean, the lane's bad, but <laughs> that's a zone. Yeah, yeah this is a disaster <laughs> right now. So yeah, it just goes back to the draft here. Uh, they pick Lucian from a lot. Uh, this will be probably the first time that they really get incredibly punished for it. Yeah, and uh, we we see the best Lucian Prom lane arguably in the world when Uzi and Marta play it, yeah. uh, and they still can get punished for playing what is an incredibly greedy lane. I mean, there will be a time where you can go for the all-in, but uh, you, you know, the fact that it's double range, the fact that it is Karma, who is so hard to take out, uh, especially when you get zoned from three melee creeps of experience is going to be bad. Best thing about this right now is Vlad does have shove in this lane. Kirei has to watch out, cannot play towards this bot side if Revolta and Karma is going to be in the area. Yeah, and all of a sudden they want to fight, but yeah, they're looking for Karma's it. here. Kirei was moving around as well as yeah. Kirei wants to get the knockup, but Toka's just brutalizing both members at once. I actually think that was a really bad flash from Revolta. I mean, Jockster was there. He didn't need to flash. That was everything that was going to come out of Kirei as well as Cos Q at that point. Probably could have just, you know, consolidated, even looked for a skirmish. Instead, burns an early summoner spell, Raz. Yeah, must have been a bit of nerves because... That was smartly played from Kirei. He mm -hmm. did recognize that was going to happen. Got the hop on the rev on Revolta. It looks like he's about to die, actually. Oh, no, he's just taking camp. He's fine. <laughs> he's good. It's just the red buff. The yeah. old Gragas red buff at level 3. But yeah. A difficult one. It was a good overall play from INTZ to stop them from going into the blue side uh, jungle and really start to collapse. But Kirei played that smart, and he's able to get that blue buff here. Yeah, uh, I mean, this has to go over to the mid lane in Cosq because otherwise there's just absolutely nothing he can do. Uh, I, I just want to go back to the point that, you know, both teams set that one out, and then it was Dark Passage one more time, making the smart play that really solidified them an advantage in the fact that now there's no Gragas body plan. Ooh. Elwind getting aggressive. One more auto attack will do it. He flashes, and first blood goes to Elwind. And that is definitely good news for Dark Passage. Yeah, 100%. We already said it. I mean... You can win this lane matchup now as Echo, but the fact that you went grass means that you're looking for chip trades, not the all-in. Yeah. For some reason, Yang pulls the trigger on the all-in, and Alwyn makes him pay for it. He got incredibly greedy. He knew he was taking better trades, and then decided to all-in on it. Realized, of course, Trundle has Pillar. He can follow you up on you, and he has a lot of damage. So, uh, definitely was incredibly greedy and paid for it off that. Well, teleports back up towards the top side of the map as well. Stuns up all of these minions. We'll be able to hold on to this wave. See whether that's going to help out. But as far as shoving is concerned, we saw the bottom lane actually moving back in favor of DP. As Revolt is going to help Tokers push this wave out as well. So honestly, a nightmare early game out of INTZ right now. I mean, they had a shoving advantage top side of the map. I mean, honestly, Echo can just play this as a null factor until he goes back and picks up his Sheen. Now Alwind is massive. He's itemized very nicely towards a cow first. So he's not going to be able to be pushed out of the lane. Jockster and Macau had a good lane, but then, you know, the fact that Jockster went across to help Revolta, who only flashed away, didn't get an advantageous trade, allowed Zeitnot and Rogu to get back in, and then the early blue buff that should have been denied from CosQ because of an invade from Revolta went over uncontested, so now Vlad's in some trouble. Honestly, the map fell apart quite early by INTZ, and now it's about them just, you know, calming down and making sure they reset. Yeah, exactly. And you take a look at the draft going in for INTZ, and this was re really intelligently played. They had shove in every lane, and they really, as you said, 
go into that uh, blue buff and they wanted to go for it. It has come back to the part that INTZ's execution, like th sure they're incredibly smart, but their execution on their actual tactics doesn't always come to plan. Yeah, and so I, and I like that point. Good. You know, the yeah, exactly right. The fact that they had the right idea that they should have been looking for it, uh, but you know, because it didn't go their way, uh, they're willing to make the flex, which is sending their jaw into the top lane incredibly early. Now this is a four-man push. Yeah, six minutes, very early on. But of course, that fortification is now gone. Revolt is going to move over as well. So the four-man shove, like you just said. Makes sense. I mean, they have so much priority in this top lane now. That's a huge wave that they're going to force Alwind off. If he doesn't leave, then he's going to die. Revolt is looking for it as well. Doesn't have the cask just yet. Yeah. Four members here in a big minion wave. Looks like this tower will fall down. DP a little bit late to this one. And this tower will fall in first brick. Should go straight over to the Brazilians. I'm yeah. not surprised that they didn't see this coming. This is honestly the earliest we've seen the first brick go down in the tournament. Teams don't usually look to swap out of it. Of course, they swap because of the poor matchup in topside. That was really smart for my NTZ. And so now they get the first brick. There's goal. no response. They're still going. I mean, yeah. this is absolute. Th this is a really poor response out of Dark Passage because Elwyn was one of their win conditions. We said that they want to set up for a one-four. All of a sudden, three members stayed bot. Alwyn's getting shoved out, and that's two huge creep waves and a massive CS advantage now back with Yang just because there was no response from the Dark Passage lineup. They should be able to defend this. Well, Koski's going to get his shield broken and help clear out this minion wave, but that doesn't help Elwyn. And this turret is just a hair's breadth away from falling down. Kure has his whole jungle lit up as well by this time that INTZ <laughs> was given. Kure's been watching Meteos. <laughs> They're the only two junglers that I've ever seen do this on Rek'Sai. I mean, they go towards the early armor and health of what is going to be that Jerome's fish first, as opposed to something like a Sightstone. I mean, the stacking on jungle camps is quite quick, uh, but that, that's an interesting pickup there. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how it goes out, but I think the best thing about this is now that they're far behind, not only just because of the tower push itself, but the fact that they were able to plaster that red side, top side uh, the jungle with wards does mean that right now Rek'Sai, even though he's going for this build, uh, has a bit of damage, should be able to outskirmish Revolta. Revolta will never put himself in that position. Yep. We'll, we'll see whether it works. As Yang's moved it down towards the bottom side of the map, just gets out of the way of the Trundle completely. And the Trundle's now just on water, walkabout in the jungle, trying to find his way back into a position where he can farm. But side on Rogu will get some damage down under this outer turret on the top side of the map. And of course, things are very dark. By NTZ on the top. They certainly are. They've backed away. They're going to walk up with a minion line. Uh, the reason they backed away is because CosQ also disappeared into Fog of War, so they're bringing Revolter up. That's actually really nice. I mean, they just back away. Uh, they don't want to push anything at this stage of the game, and they want to be able to sweep out the ward. So I like the way INTZ played that. Once again, they did kind of forfeit any early game advantage they had through a poor jungle play. Uh, and they've put Macau in a pretty massive CS hole. I mean, he's 30 CS down now. Uh, as we go a little bit dark here, uh, but uh, I think that, you know, this is something that they should be able to battle their way back into. Yeah, exactly. So I think Dark Passage right now, even though uh, Elwind is a little bit behind, he finds himself not only in a good matchup, uh, but in a longer lane too. So if, if uh, Rek'Sai, if Kirei does decide to actually play up towards this matchup here, could be a good find for him. But regardless of that, that's the same uh, towards the bottom lane for Dark Passage. Yeah, and there. of course Elwind yeah. now has a full minion wave to lap up underneath this turret as well. Probably should get the next one to crash at the same time. So Yang now the one with not as much to do. And it seemed like a sacrifice of Elwind. And what it did was get Zeitnot really far ahead with all the extra space and farm that he was given. And this is my favorite time of the game is uh, generally when we do see that one tower is being taken and not on the side tower and the side lanes. Yeah. Uh, because now really a lot of focus is going to be towards uh, Kyrie and Revolt and where they do t decide to show pressure. If you play towards Elwind uh, right now, that's going to be a massive uh, a problem towards uh, Brahmin, uh, Brahmin Lucian. Yeah, and I think that the good thing here is that, you know, Brahmin Lucian were able to push up, get that big CS advantage without being punished by a teleport. You know, Yang did have the shove in response and could have maybe looked top, but, you know, all those wars have expired. Uh, no deep vision has come in from Revolta now. Arrow is available, but, you know, 35 CS is nothing to scoff at. Uh, so, big advantage right now in the bottom lane, and not really all that much INTZ can do as a response. Yeah, early game items also picked up here by Zeitnot with that 
Serrated Dirk as well as Longsword and Dagger. And it's going to be the Pickaxe as well as Double Dagger here from Macau. So not exactly optimal from the Ash. There's a bit of a scuffle in the river towards the top and bottom side. And I love Rek'Sai going up against INTZ because even though if you can't get the wards in your favor, uh, he does the most with the least amount of vision. You can really track down the enemy jungler, can track down what the enemy team is as a whole. Um, his Q is fairly good. Looks like I'm going to be going on Dragon. And of course when Raz says he, he means she yeah. in the Rek'Sai. <laughs> uh, but you know, we're all good with that. Uh, don't you call my land dolphin a male, my friend. <laughs> uh, but has done a really good job of, you know, playing towards topside, making sure that they have enough vision and now disappearing into the wall, picking up a free dragon for himself on the bottom side of the map. I uh, wish I knew the kind of species that Rek'Sai was, by the way. Land dolphin, I just told you. Uh, ah, so, sorry. Yeah, uh, so uh, I think that their early game was actually pretty smart here, Dark Passage. You know, good reactionary play more than proactive play. Uh, off the back, a lot of Teray and actually Kozky. So uh, credit to Kozky for uh, being able to help out his jungler in that situation. Yeah, also make his way back up in this farm count as well. Was getting punished a little bit early on by Tokers, but since, after that big rotational play from INTZ, has been the benefactor. Has a 10 CS advantage. And now it is going to be about 1,000 gold in the lead for Dark Passage. This is a losing first brick. This is great for INTZ where they keep putting up uh, their bottom lane and this top lane to really defend this tower. Not only defend, but of course, your Karma and Ash. Level 6, you're going to be really pressing the go button at any point with that Gragas. So, uh, Dark Passage right now, they should definitely always have Rek'Sai at least pathing towards top side to help out Brahmin uh, Lucian. Um, if there are no uh, uh, TP wards being placed from INTZ, regardless of that, they can really chase you down through this lane. Yeah, and this is smart. I mean, they don't want to allow Deep Freeze to come across, so they are trying to get some vision for themselves. Uh, but Dark Passage have fought back well in this regard. Oh, Rogu. In a little bit of trouble, but Kirei he says, I'm going to take away my Raptor Camp, and that should be enough to deter them, and it was. Zellwind also clearing out vision, but that red buff still watered up. No shield. Remember, the Ash Arrow is available. Macau looking for a target. Kure notices that he is going to have company around this Brambleback and is going to back away. Both teams have very good pick potential right now. I mean, Cos Q holds a lot of that on the side of Dark Passage. That's why they're collapsing around the mid lane. At the same time, Ash, you know, now that that Crystalline Arrow is available, can definitely just pick someone out. So. Uh Joxta gets watered. Nice Winter's Bite lands from Rogu, but not going to be able to catch up to the Karma that Inspire. A little bit too much movement speed. And the red buff was taken by Kyrie, despite all of the pressure. It's good to see INTZ actually output this pressure. Um, real question is whether we're gonna be, they're going to actually choke or play a lot more passive than their usual play. Uh, this time it looks like they're actually looking to aggress with their shove. Um, Got to watch out though. Looks like Dark Passage in general, have been looking to not only defend, but actually get a pick if, whenever possible. And they do have Koski right now, a level 11, so if they get the opportunity, they'll go for it. Yeah, four members towards the top side of the map here as Rogu is going to show. Kure going to join him as well. So it looks like the hard shove on this outer turret, and we'll see whether they go for some sort of dive. Koski was thinking about coming up, but due to Tokas shoving out that lane, did have to head back. I actually think that uh, INTZ probably should have rotated on that way. I mean... It's hard to call, right? But you know that Alwind is going to shove the next wave. He doesn't want to be frozen on by Yang any more than what uh, was the opposite at the start of the match. Uh, so, you know, you can disappear Macau and Jockster into Fog of War, you know, maybe get Revolta up there to shove one extra wave, then use that Karma, use that Ash to try and set up a pick in the bottom lane. Because uh, right now, oh! Arrow's going to land. Good Unbreakable, but Rogu's still taking a lot of damage. The heal has to come out. Great exhaust onto Revolta as the culling comes in. Zite not interrupted as Tokas looking for the kill on the Braum. The Hemoplague's going to secure it as now Kyrie's starting the fight. It is Tokas taking down Rogu first off, and now INTZ trying to chase this one out. Koskyu turns up, takes down the minion wave, but Kyrie very low to start off anything, and the slow comes in. Good Mantrude Q as Kyrie has to flash to get out of the way.
And that is just one pick for INTZ, but it looks like all they needed. And I was saying the priority should have been used on the bottom side, but at least they get something on the top side of the map. Now that turret that they put all the additional work into earlier will be able to fall down, and INTZ probably looking to regain that gold lead. Yeah, and that was a real, little scary for Revolta going in there because, of course, the Braum versus Gra Gragas matchup, he puts up the shield. He actually has to hold his mm -hmm. actual cast to see if he can actually bounce someone in. So his cast wasn't the most effective, but he didn't bounce Braum away. So in the end of the day, it works out well for them. They only get one pick, but at the end, of, that was that's what they wanted. Yeah, it certainly was. And, you know, we also got doubles up summoner spells because of the cast because he knew that Vlad was going to be able to pick up Rogu, so he threw it at Zeitnot, yeah. who had to burn heal and flash in response to that. Um, so really like that play, and now they're looking for another one. He has Flash Body Slam. I wonder what's going to happen. I always wanted to cast PowerPoint League of Legends. <laughs> <laughs> I like this slide, though. Is well, they easy? killed three members. That's what <laughs> happened. Whoa! So let's figure it out. Revolta no longer has Flash, so he used Flash Body Slam out of the brush. I was most likely onto Karay, I want to say. Yep. And, you know, Ghost Blade was burnt in response out of Zytnot, but that didn't really work either. He died. And then Rogu jumped in to try and help out and died as well again. You know, this is what being a detective is all about, Raz. Yeah. And this almost makes it more exciting. Nah, and they nah. picked themselves up a Rift Herald as response. My prediction oh, is here we go. Let's see exactly Let's what out. did happen. Flash Body Slam onto two. Oh, Ooh. I was wrong. Okay. Well, that's the dream. Yeah, he was able to get that Flash Body Slam. They were setting it up for it in general. That was a great point, the fact that they knew that. That's honestly the only wave, uh, only objective Dark Passage to look for, other than the Dragon it was down. So they knew it was available, uh, and INTZ really set up for it well. Yeah, I think that the biggest thing behind that was that the Flash wasn't used the first time from Revolta, because it was the arrow that set it up. So he still had the way to get in on multiple members. And the fact that they were that patient, I mean, let the wave get all the way to the turret, uh, it's kind of risky because generally the team will walk down through your jungle and actually get away, but Dark Passage, they make the wrong choice. Uh, there is only two of them. They walk back through the Creep Wave and Revolta cleans them up. Great trade here, just off that uh, Dark Passage trade. They take the top lane there. Looks like they're actually going to take mid lane as well, so I'm not, not, not the not best Not so trade. much of a good trade as the arrow sails by. If that had a hit, uh, I think that that actually would have been a fight starter because you can see that Joxa and Revolta were walking towards mid lane. Unfortunately, Macau, a little bit you know, off with his arrow, couldn't count the creeps enough at the way. Uh, it means that they can't fight off the back of it because, yeah, you're right, that was looking good for INTZ, but they give up another turret, forfeit the gold lead again just a little bit, even though they have a lot of these kills, uh, not really showing on the scoreboard just yet. Yeah, and this is uh, pretty bad because even though it was, a, it was looking like a, a good trade, this is actually worst case scenario for INTZ. Not only do they lose their mid tower, which means they lose a lot of priority, and a matchup right now, Malzahar is going to be shoving in quite a bit with his Merlin Namakon. So, um, this is not looking good simply because Dark Passage now do have the inside track, or at least the option to go into either side lane. Uh, give Elwind a lot more options, really. But I think they've made like a weird choice here because uh, they cull out a wave. They sent Kozku back top lane, that's pushing in. They've got Elwind with teleport bottom lane. I like Elwind being there, but I do think that, you know, now that the Gragas Cast is back available, Ash Arrow is going to be available on next minion wave. They do need to be careful uh, with how they play this one, Dark Passage. So, you know, they get a 500 gold lead back. They've got a good ward at the turret, so you know they can spot that arrow coming out. But they do need to make sure that you know they don't get picked up. Yeah, this is a really way weird way to use your mid tower advantage. Malzahar should just be mid, constantly shoving in, and just use your bottom lane to really uh, complete uh, set the tempo, either going bot side or top side, depending on which buff is really going to be uh, your look towards. What are you looking for? And the other thing is, right, is Vlad's going to match the Malzahar push. This is why I really don't like it. Like, Vlad is the one that wants the 1 3 1 at this stage of the game. I mean, Hurricane's being picked up on Ash. He can sit mid and wave clear, no problem. And then Vladimir actually, just with this full tank build so far, gets to get to his next item without being punished for it. In reality, what you should be looking to do is use Rogu and Zeitnot to apply pressure to the lane that Vlad wants to go to because he can't really win that 1v1 or 1v2 at the moment because he has gone so far into MR and not really into damage. Saying that now that he's going towards a Rylai's Crystal Scepter, that window is going to close pretty quickly. Yeah, best thing about this is not only did does Vlad have QSS, uh, Gragas has QSS as well. So yeah, Revolta does not want to get Nethergrass. Yeah, and it's always great to see uh, Gragas have QSS because uh, if he does go in, he's going to be the engaging force. He's going to be en engaging with his own uh, actual body. So <laughs> if he goes in, uh, get the body slam, he doesn't want to get locked down and completely demolished. He wants to have that time to really do, uh, throw out his cast. So uh, send it, sending Vlad in the side wave with QSS means that he's 100% going to be able to chase down the Meltar. Send him mid, uh, get that priority going. That's what they should do. 
Well, we do have some big item spikes actually coming in as Macau just finished off his Infinity Edge. On the other side, though, Cos Q does have his Rallye's Crystal Scepter for that two item spike. And the Titanic Hydra is completed here for Elwind. See where the DP is looking for a fight because it does look like INTZ are prepared, especially with that Ash looking very, very strong. And all of these QSSs that they've got all over the place. A lot of setup, nothing really to contest. 21 minutes into the game, they can't really look to take Baron, so INTZ is not really respecting that. They only have one blue trinket on their team, not really available right now, so Talker should head back to get a blue. Well, has got the flank here as Jokster is going to get stunned up, but he doesn't fall down. Koski Good shield trouble. comes in, and Jokster will eventually fall down. Koski in trouble as he gets down towards the bottom side, but Talker is has to use his pull very, very early as there's the flash. Gets out of the way of the arrow there from Zeit, not as Yang gets himself forward, but is it too much? There's a the flash! Macau looks for the crit, but doesn't get it! As Rogu is able to get himself out, it's a one for nothing trade, but DP have lost all of their health bars. And they used every single summoner spell and nearly lost out on the fight. I mean, let's take another oh. look at the end of it again. Macau flashing forward, that was so close. But Koski's positioning for what was a pick was really poor there, Raz. I mean, he walked up outside of the Braum range. He got cast back into the entirety of the team. Oh, so uh, wow. Wow. Dark Passage, with what should be a power spike right now, ultimately loses the trade. Exactly. And it could have gone a lot worse. Macau did end up missing out in his Ash ulti. So they get the mid tower for that. And sure, they lost a, a member of their team, but that is really good for INTZ here. Yeah, that was... Pretty much worst case scenario for Dark Passage. I mean, they pulled the trigger on the fight. They had priority, but they get stopped up. I mean, when you have something like uh, <laughs> the Melzahar burning pretty much double summoner spells to get in, let's have another look at it. Ghost Flash on the way in and then gets served into the entirety of the team. I mean, if Elwyn wasn't there, it would have been a much, uh, you know, different team fight. But on the back end of this, Tokas, Joxa, Mikau, uh, sorry, Tokens, Yang, Macau, they're all sitting as a group and, you know, there's no way Koski can get back in. So that means that they just don't have the damage output anymore out of their Melzahar to be able to win that fight. I think that's really sloppy out of Koski, actually. I don't think he can afford to be the one that pulls the trigger like that at the start of every fight. Yeah, exactly. And if he's going to do it, then he at least has to let the rest of his team know. It, feel, it felt like they were uh, running up behind. The moment he flashed in and got the ulti off, uh, Kirei went into a tunnel, but it was fairly late. So if you're going to do it, do it simultaneously. Yeah. You can't do it like that because Malzahar was irrelevant afterwards. Yeah, and I, I really do think that that's a good point. Uh, it's kind of weird when you can, like, <laughs> when you burn double mobility summoners into get into a team fight and you, like, follow up, the rest of the team is like, we would love to, but we actually just can't. <laughs> uh, We're not here yet. They're going for the play one more time, however. Yeah, Macau is going to get stuffed up. Really that's good killer as Macau gets destroyed. Rogu delivered to him and bonks him in the back of the head. Zeitnot all the way at the front of the fight as he tries to call Jokster. He does end up falling down and Zeitnot survives somehow as Tokers looking to try and get himself in there. We're going to study this moment for a little while, but he wasn't able to find anyone. That is a much better team fight coming out of Dark Passage. They wait for the pillar, they isolate one target, and then Cosq blows them up. That's how the composition should be played. I think that is a much better flank coming out of the team, and it's because Cosq wasn't the one that started it. He followed up on the isolated target. Exactly, and this is why I love Trundle in this actual composition. Once he sets down that pillar, really there's no way you can come in and help Macau. Uh, so Zeit not sure, he found himself in a poor end of that fight because actually got <laughs> completely ulted in. But regardless of that, that was an excellent engage from the team. Trundle really showing that he can either, he can shove out and really impact this team fight. And already, of course, that's the two-item spike for Zeitnot. Picks that one up and then immediately they win a team fight. Good illustration there. Well, it was a little bit of a disaster otherwise for INTZ, who are now clawing themselves back. Of course, it's not very much as far as gold is concerned. Yeah, this Dark. has been a very back and forward game, and I think it shows that, you know, whoever isolate, uh, executes on their comp is going to win it. Because we've seen a couple of engages, you know, with the Ash Arrow, with the Flash Body Slam coming out of Gragas. When INTZ have priority, they're winning the team fight. And then we've seen one very good engage coming out of, you know, Alwind out of Karay, where Coscu manages to follow up this time. And that was an absolute wash. So I really do think that, you know, Dark Passage right now at this stage of the game to have priority everywhere on the map. But it's about whether they can execute on their uh, composition properly. Yeah, oh, he's going to search through. Coscu gets caught out and will be destroyed. The ultimate was there from Rogu, but unable to save his mid laner. And once again, if you can execute on your comp, I mean, if you're a Melzaha, you can't go wandering through a river because even if that arrow didn't hit, he had no summoner spells. And the Echo Parallel Convergence was on top of him already. He was definitely going to die. INTZ playing 
up this mid lane now. Whereas exactly. He and looks so disappointed. <laughs> well, because it just happens a time and time again where teams are forfeiting their actual pressure on the map. Uh, Kire didn't know that Koski was in the line of fire. He actually tunneled across the wall, so he could not head back and help out his team. The team was there, just un unable to actually help him in that situation. Yeah, the one person that took the arrow couldn't afford to take the arrow <laughs> yeah. pretty much, especially if you're going to burn double summoner spells to get in. I really do want to point out, however, that you know, regardless, he was probably going to eat the Echo Stun. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I just think that that's a little bit of miscommunication one more time. You know, you got to be able to communicate. You have to take this arrow. Uh, you can't go back over the wall. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to die. And in the end, he does. Well, as far as an update on the rest of the map, I mean, we've got a 70 CS lead here for Elwind on this Trundle. If we were talking about Elwind as a win condition for this team, I feel like he's setting himself up as best he possibly can at the moment. Well, the best thing about this is he's actually setting up the rest of his team because there's so much priority. Not only just the priority, Dark Passage's earlier investment in the Dragons are paying off. 26 minutes into the game, you have the Malzahar and two Earth Dragons. Uh, you ha if you're INTZ, you have to respect this Baron take. Mm -hmm. So right now, with Trundle pressuring the side lane uh, incredibly well does mean that Dark Passage is in a good point where they really don't have to pick a fight going forward. They're also able to clear out a lot of this vision around the Baron area. We'll see whether they pull the trigger straight away. But one more like time, not. I mean, they're playing with Zeitnot in the mid lane, three members towards the Baron pit. There is a ward spotting Zeitnot out. Like, Ash Arrow can come through right now if they want to look for it. Oh, there yeah, it is as well as Macau is able to lock that one down. Good heal comes out, but there's the flash from Joxa. Can't get it. That's fine. Flash that and heal out of Zeitnot one more time. That's just them not playing the map correctly. They have such a pressure point around Baron Pit. Why is Zeitnot, the AD carry, solo farming out, you know, 2012 double lift impression style? <laughs> uh, that, that's one more time that, you know, Dark Passage are going to lose key summoner spells, especially against the likes of Gragas, the likes of Ash. And you just can't afford to do this too many times. The best thing about this, or at least it, it, it see, it shows what how Dark Passage actually wants to pressure this out. Because Malzahar, probably the best option to stick mid uh, with um, uh, Rek'Sai to get the wave shoved in. He does have a lot of damage, doesn't have to commit much mana. <laughs> uh, but they want to actually hide Malzahar so they can actually get the most respect uh, humanly possible for this Baron take. But they're not willing to actually press the button. Um, so looks like they're just kind of uh, footing around the pit putting around their vision, but unwilling to do so. And the longer they take in this position, obviously you're going to give INTZ a lot more of an opportunity to get the pick that we saw just then. Yeah, 100%. And the big thing for me is the fact that, you know, INTZ's pin defensive pinks are so much better than what uh, Dark Passage have right now. So they were able to come fire that arrow out of Fog of War. They knew it was there. They've got three pink wards in their side of the jungle because they understand that, you know, if you just have the pit warded and you can approach, that they can probably stop this Baron for a little bit longer. I mean, Burning Face hasn't been picked up by Malzahar yet in the Leand Leandry's tournament, uh, torment, so they are going to be okay. Uh, but we keep going back to it. Alwyn right now, he's massive. He's 60 CS up. He's two levels ahead of Yang. So uh, that early game definitely coming out ahead for him. Uh, but the, the advantage doesn't last forever. Hmm. We'll see whether they can act on it now. As Revolta breaks the shield on Cos but just testing the waters for the moment as Tokas gets some damage on the Kyrie. And he feels very free, like just able to do that because he does have the QSS. If the ulti is burned, he's just going to immediately QSS an ulti since the passive on Malzahar is down. So there's no real way to punish that since uh, Trundle right now is in the bottom lane. So uh, good for Revolta. Pretty ballsy, you would think, for him to just randomly uh, hit body, uh, body slam right into that. But he knows exactly how it would play out. Well, we've got four QSSs now completed, so INTZ can probably do that with four people. Of course, Jockster painting a large target on the back of his head now by not grabbing one himself, but doesn't want to conform. I also think that, you know, at this stage of the game, if you're ulting up the Karma, she probably just wants to get a Mantra D off for the rest of the team, and she's going to be quite content with the job that she's done. We actually saw that, didn't we? And it went in favor of INTZ. Yeah, 100%. So I, I think that, you know, this is an area that uh, CosQ has to wait for his ultimate now. Yeah. You know, maybe off the back end of a Braum stun or something like that. Or just use it to get the initial tag of the Braum uh, in there. And then, you know, use the follow-up damage that's going to come out of someone like Zion not to really lock down the kill. Now, Alwyn's being targeted out. Don't know if they're going to be able to win this, Raz. This is going to be awful. They're doing the best that they can right now as Elwin just throws down the subjugate says, well, huh. try and kill me now. They just wanted the ultimate actually out of him. So, you know, that means that Yang at this stage can't be soloed out when it pushes up. But now Jockster and uh, Tucker's in a little bit of trouble. Uh, looking for Macau. Winter's by does land, but Rogu might be a little bit too far forward. Stands behind oh. a minion as there's mm. the flash from Sight not Oh, sorry, Koski gets him out of the way of the arrow. Interesting choice from the four-man unit, but they're not done here. Yeah, Elwind 
possibly out of position, but good pillar. But overall, of course, if the jungler is going to be showing into this bot side, Revolta uh, knowing that the full control of this Baron is in Dark Passage's favor, but they end up going for it anyways. Looks like they're going to be fighting for Dragon here. Yeah, no Ash Arrow means that initiation is a little bit harder, and the team fight has been split. Oh, he steals away the Dragon here as well, and it has started up. Immediately, the Karma gets destroyed as Yang in the back line has to ult himself. Back into the Baron Pit as Tokka's going 1v1, loses it against CosQ. There's a really big parallel convergence, but unable to go off as Kozyu eventually falls down. Macau trying to get damage over the wall as Elwind flashes forward. It's a double kill for Kire in the pit. As now Macau and Tokka's trying to kite this one out. It's a three for two so far as Tokka's, he wants that pull back up and does find it as the pillar doesn't lock down the Vladimir. 9TZ get away with the skin of their teeth, but they lose the dragon. That is three mountains now for Dark Passage. Yeah, that's massive. All of a sudden, you know, Baron is the realest threat on the map. Dark Passage still win the team fight as well. It is a two for three for one, I think, in the end. Uh, and really, that was on the back end of a really nice pillar out of Alwyn. The Echo was on top of the Lucian, and the pillar stopped it for just enough time for him to be able to get out enough damage. You know, they re engage the team fight, and they absolutely smash him on the back end. So right now, going going to what the next play is going to be. Obviously, Baron is the most amount of pressure Dark Passage can uh, put forward. But now, Elwind is in an, an amazing position. And so I guess we're just going to take a second look at how this team fight actually played out. Yeah, so as they run into the Dragon Pit here, you know, you see Yang dive onto Zeitnot. And this pillar right here that actually separates him, makes him go back into the pit, means Zeitnot can get away with it. Meanwhile, the, pretty much uh, Vladimir solos out the Malzaha. <laughs> Zaitnot does end up falling down to Yang, who gets flashed over the wall and destroyed uh, by Kare, who actually just fired a Prey Seeker, so didn't even need a flash <laughs> there. Uh, but that was a really nice team fight out of Dark Passage. Elwin's pillars have actually surprised the heck out of me. He's team fighting really well on a champion go that is hard this. to execute upon. Yeah, looking really good as oh, the Baron has been up. started. Hawkshot does come in. You can see Yank, he started off the teleport. In goes Revolta as Rogu starts off the fight. Good Glacial Fissure as Jokster immediately falls down. Koski grabs that kill as Elwin looking in the back line. But Yank destroying the back line of Dark Passage. Zeitnot flashes himself over the wall as Tok is trying to get the damage down that he can. But Yank starting to go off. Zeitnot Revolta falls. Oh. But Zeitnot sacrifices his life for it. And Elwin, the raid boss that he is, is not quite strong enough. And that's the triple. And INTZ will win the team fight. And one more time, horrible decision making out of the Dark Passage lineup. Zeitnot dashes back over the wall to challenge who he thinks is Solo Revolta and just eats an Ash Arrow in the face and dies immediately. I mean, uh, INTC, they come up huge in that regard, uh, but that was just really bad positioning from the team fight. And just looking at a broader perspective, they should not even want gone for it. You have three, uh, El uh, three, three Earth Dragons, don't go for the Baron itself, that gives Elwin so much strength in going bottom lane and actually mm -hmm. challenging the uh, Yang, who did end up going for QSS here, means that the matchup's going to be that much harder for him, so don't actually put it to a team fight situ situation. So one more time, the engage comes in, Rogu re-engages this one, but Tokas flies into the back la uh, line, and all of a sudden, I mean, Zeitnot has to get over the wall. Here he sees Revolta, and he kind of says, you know, I can take this one-on-one -on -one duel, but he just gets destroyed. It uh, wasn't even narrow, I don't think. I think he just got auto attack. And, yeah, uh, then on down. the back end, I mean, Tokas is able to clean it up. So, you know, once again, just really questioning the uh, positioning. We talk about 500 comps a lot. You know, the fact that they can't really get in without being in danger. And, you know, that was just a good example of it. Of Zyte not not making the right call. Exactly. And so we don't see much Lucian in general in this patch, mostly because it is a mid lane AD carry going up against Vladimir, Echo, really unable to peel yourself from that massive tanky force. Uh, but if you're going to play it, then you have to play it with a, a good mind of how you're positioning. Did we did, we're not seeing that right now. Well, what we're seeing is a massive Ash. Because that is the Phantom Dancer completed, as well as that first two item spike. Has the QSS, has the Last Whisper as well, and Macau in a silent achiever this game. 4, 1, and 5 now. Massive amount of kill participation, 80-odd percent. Another poor decision from Dark Passage. Uh, Elwind is committing straight back onto this Baron simply because they can take it quickly. But INTZ, best situation from them, they can take that fight any day of the yeah. week. They want the 5v5 now. Like, as soon as the Last Whisper is picked up, as soon as you know this Vladimir is as big as he is now, they actually want the 5v5. Well, they're looking to get themselves in here as well as Kire tunnels himself outside, not trying to take down some Krugs as INTZ will be able to steal away the red. 
We have complete control around this Baron now as Tok is still trying to create space. The arrow held onto by Not the only cow. do they have complete control around Baron, I mean, bottom wave is huge. It's reversing onto the Dark Passages side of the matchup. They just have control of the whole map. We're looking for an option here as Hemoplate goes out into a couple of members. Tok is getting himself in there with the pull as Revolta finds the body slam, but not quite good enough. As Elwin oh, gets himself the flank, this perfect. is a good position and a great pillow. Oh, that ultimate out of Revolta was fantastically placed, but Elwin's still in there. Being a nuisance, Jockster is going to fall down, and Yang has to ult himself out. Does survive for the moment oh and has goodness. the GA, but look at that AoE damage. The shutdown comes in onto Macau, but that's a triple kill for Zeitnot, and Yang still melting down. The GA is still there, and he won't actually have to use it, but that's a big fight for Dark Passage. So INTZ just chipping out the tank line. Their ulti, the Ash ulti hit Zaitna, but he was so safe in that, com in that complete scenario. And of course, uh, Elwin gets a great flank, able to tank up the world at this point in the game, and really does, uh, does set the team fight for them. Choke points with a pillar, mm -hmm. just a disgusting situation. And Elwin, great placement to start that one off. But a little bit of hesitation from Dark Passage here. I mean, Karee was the person that went back to once again deal with the creep line. It means that they can't start up the Baron. Uh, I think that was an opportunity to be able to look at it. If you send the Trundle back instead, uh, you know, bottom wave is massive. Someone still has to go deal with that. So really nice team fight this time as we take another look at it. You're right. It was just a huge flank that came out of the Trundle. I mean, Tucker's burnt so much to get in the first time. And then this really just ruined their day because no one could get out of here. Uh, and it looked like it was going to go so well. Revolta, immediate interruption, but then you realize that the two squishies are isolated on the bottom part of the team fight. And you're right, it was just Zeitnot. His target selection this time around was much better. One more time, goes yeah. aggressive, but gets away from the Vladimir. And it means that he was able to pick up a triple kill before getting blown up, but he did his job. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's so... It's nice to see CDR coming out of Trundle here with that Spirit Visage. Not going to be for that CDR, but it, it's a nice plus because he was able to get two key killers throughout the entire fight, zoning Macau and ending up killing Joxer. Not only taking his flash initially, but they were able to chase him down. Uh, and demolish them throughout that entire fight, and it's making the team fight that much easier for Zaytnot. And you know, honestly, uh, Jox has had a little bit of a rough game this time around. You can see that, you know, he's been in the front line maybe one too many times, got five deaths for his team. Uh, you know, he is the person that's trying to land down some key snares or something like that to be able to keep the front line off his uh, poor AD carry. But uh, you, you need to be a little bit more careful with how you're playing that. Oof, that arrow very close onto Rogu. The Winter's Bite not going to find Tokas either. INTZ still positioning aggressively. It was an overreach that lost in the last team fight. Maybe just need to calm down, cool the Jets. Yeah, no, I think that they're, they're actually playing uh, the game pretty correctly at the moment. I mean, their Ash is absolutely massive. Uh, it's sitting a Last Whisper ahead of what the Lucian is. And the Lucian, you know, hasn't gone towards any crit. So they definitely have an area to be able to play with. Uh, so I don't mind the fact that, you know, they're trying to play up and aggressive. It's just that they need to be able to land the Ash Arrow. They need to be able to get these key initiations on. Because eventually, is going to uh, outscale the whole team. I mean, Meldahar late game is absolutely disgusting. Well, speaking of which, they're going to go straight onto this Baron. Already down to half health. As Kyrie wasn't even in the pit. As Jock's still looking to lock him down. Preyseeker comes in. They do take down the Baron. As Yang gets himself into the back line one more time. INTZ looking for the team fight. As Tok is right in the middle of it. Gets into the pool and starts doing work. Koskyu now trying to kite this one out as Yang goes down to his GA, gets the shutdown as Zeitnot dashes over the wall. The culling oh. is going to lock down the Vladimir and Macau is able to finish off the team fight. INTZ come up trumps. Elwin <laughs> gets the chomp under the support as now Koskyu. Can he get the Malefic Visions across the team? No. Looks like he can't and he's the last man standing. This is dangerous. Another arrow and that is going to be the ace and possibly even the game here for INTZ. Yeah, no, it doesn't look like it. Only 15 seconds on Zaitnot. That team fight went for a very long time but INTZ one more time even though they lose the dragon able to pick up the team fight win. Uh, they'll probably look to see if they can get themselves an inhibitor here uh, but that was one more time. You know, the fact that Zeitnot gets left alone pretty much with the Vladimir and gets destroyed uh, and not able to get around the other side. That was a smart play initially from Dark Passage. They knew that Echo was oh, taking that massive wave. They're going to go and try and end this game right here. Yes. Yes. So it was actually 25 seconds. Zeitnot's up in five, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. One Nexus turret. Just a cheeky Nexus turret so far as Rogu does say, get out of my house. And they agree. But that was a smart play initially from Dark Passage. They knew that Echo was going to answer it. They have three Earth Dragons. They're going to be able to burn that down and you have Trundle to boot, why not just disengage from that? You have Trundle and Braum, walk away, you got the pick. 
sure maybe perhaps uh, you'll be sacrificing Kirei in the uh, in the thick of things, maybe Koski as well. But you have Baron off of that. That could have been an amazing play from Dark Passage here. I think that that's one of the times where you can actually see communication troubles coming in because it's like, are we fighting or are we disengaging? If multiple members get caught in the pit, my automatic response is, you know, you've got yourself uh, Lucian, uh, pretty much, you know, Braum can jump over as well. Kirei can jump over. Three people should have been out of the back end of the pit. They, they should have sacrificed two members to keep three Baron buffs, three Baron buffs as well as three Mountain Drakes on what is pretty much a good 1-4 comp right now. Probably would have been game for Dive Passage. They would have been able to close the game out on the back end of that. Instead, you know, it's we're fighting, but we're staying in the Baron pit versus a Vladimir who's going to absolutely destroy the entirety of our team. And that is exactly what happens. So I think that that's one of the times that you can just see those decision making, uh, the communication not quite there. But not, not going to get caught out there. They must, have, they, were looking for a pick. they must have looked to commit to the fight in general simply mm -hmm. because Lucian did have flash and heal. He looked up, I, I'm pretty sure he flashed in place trying to uh, uh, dodge out a spell. He could have easily flashed out of the pit. Yeah. Had his E as well, so there was no other reason than the fact that they thought they could win that out. Yeah, and you know, if you're going to win, just get the heck out of the pit. I mean, exit towards the top side, fight in the river, open it up, allow the Braum to do his job there. Uh, instead, you know, fighting in the pit, unless you can keep Tokka's out, you're going to lose the fight. Oh, and right on the front line here, might actually have to use the Subjugate right now as the Culling flies across, gets a Revolta for a lot of damage. Good pillar placement once again, but Elwin still taking damage. And there's Kozku, throws down the ultimate, but it gets immediately QSS. And there are five on this team, remember. And there's the engagement. Kozku right into the enemy team and will be taken down. That's a GA for Kure as well as Elwin cannot tank anymore. Rogu's going to get taken down. Rampage for the Ash, who goes ballistic in the back line. That's going to be the ace. And the triple kill for Yang once again. And one more time, INTV are patient enough. They wait out the ultimate, and then when Kozku's in a bad position, they pounce. Revolta, huge ultimate. And Macau cleans up the back end of the team fight. INTZ going to win game number one. That is going to be the Nexus falling down. INTZ 1-0 now in this best of five series. And one step closer to Worlds. But that was a whole lot closer than I was expecting. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, and honestly, throughout the entire game, we were wondering how Kuski was going to perform. And from the very beginning to the very end, questions about his positioning really did shine through. There was no reason for him to be uh, positioned so uh, alone, isolated from his team there. Yeah, he was actually looking for the aggressive play. You saw that he got the ultimate out into the Fog of War. I mean, maybe that play works and you're the hero, but more likely, you know, you're going to get picked out because so many QSSs are built up at that stage. And yeah. they have so many ways to break that uh, passive and get him back into the team. Uh, so uh, as we take a look at some highlights, it definitely wasn't an easy game for INTZ. I mean, Yang overcommits here and gets absolutely destroyed. Elwin takes a bite out of him. Yeah, this yeah. was a disaster of an early game for Dark Pat, uh, for INTZ, where they had the early shoves, they had proper lanes. Not only did that lane not work out for them, but of course that uh, jungle shove here in the early game was repelled by Kure. Yeah, and one more time, you know, you can see that Dark Passage, they're just a little bit hesitant with their decision making. If the Echo is teleporting to the turret, there must be someone else here. Let's run out. Actually, it's three members. We're all going to die. Uh, this was a good team fight. One more time. Shout out to Alwyn. Great pillar placement there. Really ruins Yang's day. Uh, and they are able to pick up a good scrappy team fight victory here. Uh, but I, I really do have to question, you know, just some of the small micro decisions that were made in this game, uh, especially not this one, but the one after it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So overall, I do. It, it's going to be interesting to see how Dark Passage take this game going forward. Uh, we talked about them really making it a, a lot more of a linear, easier place uh, play style for them in the in the group stages. Right here, Trundle could not really look to split push, or he 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 could. But they decided to actually look for those team fights. They decided to look for those team plays around objectives, and they did get outplayed numerous times. And I think the biggest thing is, you know, we said you have to be able to prove that the three top lane bans are justified. Yang did get shut down early, but at the same time, you let a Vladimir and an Ash just ran, run rampant. Two very good scaling carries uh, at the end of the day. And you saw that even though Zeitnot had a very good team fight here, dashing forward, picking up a triple kill for himself, uh, it was few and far between because if Vladimir was able to zone him out, the Ash just had much more pressure around the map. And it comes down to how they played it out because Elwin could have easily just decided to bend that split pushing pressure. They could have used the, the Earth Dragons to their, or at least the, their ability to take the Baron to their advantage. Yeah. 
you, uh, trying to make it easier for Elwin to shove out and abuse the matchup. Uh, QSS now doesn't work towards Trundle's ulti, so that just means that uh, Yang is dishing out a lot more gold just for the Malzahar. That means that you don't have to pick the fight anymore. You don't have to look for those team fights. You can just make it easier for Elwin and it easier for your style because that's how you've been playing throughout the entire tournament. Yeah, I, I, I actually completely agree with that. And one more time, I'm just going to echo that I don't think they identified what their comp did well because they're looking for these 5v5 team fights when they just picked up a Baron and everyone had flash available. So not only could one per three people survive, everyone just go over the back wall. I mean, get the heck out of dodge and, you know, play towards what is that split pushing Trundle. Instead, they were trying to team fight time and time again. And this is the last one. INTZ just run over the top because they have so m many more tools to win a team fight. I mean, sure, we saw Dark Passage. If they play it perfectly, they can pick them up. But uh, INTZ's comp is built to team fight, get that early pick off, you know, be able to displace people. So, uh, that was, you know, I just don't think if Dark Pass is going to pick that uh, style of composition, play towards it. We complimented them. Play 1 4, play a very easy to execute style. Uh, don't group up in that uh, manner. Yeah, and their early game went fantastically as well for their composition. You were talking about the fact that they had the shove on the side of INTZ, they were shoving out the bottom lane, things were looking disastrous. And then all of a sudden, Revolta doesn't have Flash. All of the pressure now back in the hands of Dark Passage. That honestly felt like it couldn't have gone any better for the team, but still weren't able to convert it into a victory, even though so incredibly even all the way around. And we thought that late game was going to be the realm of Dark Passage because their decision-making has actually been good in that area. Yeah, exactly. So right now you're going to... The question is now, how is uh, their Dark Passage coach, Lelouch, how is he going to uh, talk to the team, really figure out where the problems went through? Because I think Dark Passage actually played out their early game fairly well, even mm -hmm. though they were at a disadvantage. They had a good composition. It really just came down to how they decided to play it out. And I also think that they got Alwyn the advantage. That's what we said they needed to do. We didn't think they were going to be able to do it, but, you know, three bands at Yang and a priority pick of the Trundle means that they were able to get that that win condition going, and then they just didn't play towards it. I mean, that was really confusing. When Yang was level 14, just turned level 14, uh, I mean, Elwin was level 16 and 70 CS ahead of him. Just play towards the damn trundle. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly right. Well, we'll see whether they can do it next time around, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to go to a short break. When we get back, game number two between INTZ and DP. Don't go anywhere.